Good day, students. In this narration, I will walk you through the so-called HOTS approach, higher order thinking skills that you will need for this module for all your formative and summative assessments, but in particular for preparing and submitting your tutorials and in preparation for our uh, class discussions on Thursday mornings. The first thing that you must appreciate is that as you are progressing through your academic years at the university, you are becoming a more mature, a more senior student. And with that, the exit level learning outcomes will increase in its intensity. More demands will be made of your intellectual capacity. So at first year level, 80% of your learning outcomes of the questions you will be asked and especially the answers that you will be expected to provide will be lower order thinking skills with only about 20% being higher order thinking skills. And as you see on this smart art list diagram that I provided to you, this increases every year or the, the weights change every year. So at second year level, where most of you were last year, 60% of your marks and learning outcomes in the respective modules were for lower order thinking skills and only 40% for higher order thinking skills. But this year at third year level, there is a change from predominantly lower order thinking skills to predominantly higher order thinking skills with 40% of your marks and learning outcomes comprising lower order thinking skills and 60% higher order thinking skills. And it goes on like that to fourth year, um, which is the terminal level for most professional undergraduate degrees. Now you may ask, what is this lower order and higher order thinking skills? So allow me to explain. Bloom is an educational philosopher that spoke about and developed this taxonomy, which is called Bloom's taxonomy. And it is used to draft learning outcomes um, using specific active verbs or just verbs, which is carefully arranged to mirror um, the progression from your first year to your fourth year and, and for some of you even to doctoral level. So we start with knowledge, just a passive increase of knowledge. Most of you would not have studied any law at school. So a lot of the focus for entry level lower order thinking is just knowledge, knowing what the law is, what the sources of law are, etc. But part of lower order thinking skills is also comprehension. So knowing how it works. You can demonstrate your understanding of the sources of law. So for example, if a case citation is provided to you, you can infer from that in which court it was decided, in which year it was reported, um, and in perhaps even which um, law reports it was published. The same goes for legislation. You know, how to read legislation. What is the long title of the act? Um, what is the short title of the act? What does the different chapters mean? What does the definitions mean for interpreting it, etc. But as we exit comprehension, we move into higher order thinking skills. Now the higher order thinking skills comprises the levels of application, analysis, synthesis, 
and evaluation in this um, light bulb um, of an illustration that is available on your screen. So for us, for our purposes in SAR, in the first semester of third year, the predominant focus will be on application. Your ability to take the knowledge and some of the understanding you already have about the law, but now specifically about property law, and to apply that in real life to solve problems. And so it is here in this transition from especially second year to third year, but more particularly the second semester of second year to the first semester of third year, where in most circumstances, the majority of students struggle to make that transition from predominantly lower order thinking skills, just knowing stuff and how they work, to predominantly higher order thinking skills, how to use the information you have to solve problems or to provide advice. Now, of course, in your preceding uh, academic years, you would already have had exposure to higher order thinking skills. Those demands would already have been made upon you, but not as much as it will be this year and then even more so in your fourth and final year. So this is why in SAR we facilitate your transition from second year to third year, from predominantly lower order um, thinking skills to higher order thinking skills in two concrete ways. We pre present you with 10 tutorial cycles throughout the semester. And we supplement our formal lectures with eight cycles of class discussions throughout the semester. Now, there is a lot of similarity between the tutorials and the class discussions in that you will have to download them from ClickUp. You would then have to save them and perhaps some of you will also print the class discussions and the tutorials. But what sets them apart is perhaps the following few things. For tutorials, you have to plan, write and submit the tutorial all on your own. There will be no help from either Dr. Joshua or myself or perhaps even Mr. van der Meelen. You then submit this tutorial typed according to the style guidelines we submitted to you onto ClickUp through the Turnitin link. And you will have to show us your application. And obviously we will mark it and it forms part of how your semester mark and final mark is ultimately comprised. Following the submission, we will obviously mark the tutorials and we will release a guideline where we talk you through what answers we may have been looking for. Remember, at third year level, we don't have model answers. We don't have tick box exercises because that is confined mostly to lower order thinking skills. Here, our attention is on your argument, how you present your case, how you illustrate the logic of your presentation. For purposes of class discussions, however, it is slightly different from tutorials in that you don't formally submit them. It is not marked and you do it with us. So you will be required, and I will speak about that on the next slide, to do a little bit of preparation um, before the class discussion. But for class discussions, you will see that either myself or Dr. Joshua will guide you through how we would approach planning 
the answer for the class discussion. Very important, we'll just do the planning. It will not be the final answer because we found that so many students think that in answering their questions formally, writing it down, typing it in full, the students think that they are also doing application if they can recite in a very parrot learning kind of way the requirements or the tests or the applicable case law and the relevant legislation. But they never actually do. They never actually provide the fictional characters in the problem or the, uh, the simulated um, environment with any actual answers or advice. And let it be clear for you this year, that is not enough. You can't just parrot learn. You have to actually provide advice or guidance or solve a problem. So after the tutorials, we will permit you to download the recording you don't have to submit anything and we won't mark it. But our hope is that by us showing you how we would approach it, by drafting a planning document for this class discussion, we could facilitate your learning to eventually write better, fuller, more comprehensive answers that actually provide advice or solve problems in a very carefully crafted manner. All right, so what is the expectation for our class discussions? The expectation is as soon as Dr. Joshua or myself um, upload or makes available the class discussion that you would go to click up to the class discussion tab and that you would download it. And then depending on your style and the resources you have available at home or in your residence that you would save it and work on it from your computer or, or tablet that you may have or alternatively print it um, in an old school manner. That after that, uh, that step, you would read it carefully, intentionally to see what the task is at hand, what the problem is what the instructions are and what we are expecting of you to identify which part of that week's theme we want to engage you on in a more uh, profound manner. And then and this is the key part for you to draft a planning document. I cannot stress this enough. This is a preparatory phase something that precedes you writing a formal answer for purposes of a tutorial or a test or an assignment or the exam or whatever simulated academic or professional writing you would have to do if you do go into legal practice. Planning is key. You can only know where you are going if you have a good map. And so this is what we want you to do. Draft, in academic legal sense, a map for yourself of where you are going. And I've included an example for you on the slide of how I have done it in the past for purposes of a class discussion and a larger version or perhaps a, a, a better version of this example is available on ClickUp under the additional resources tab. So specifically what we want you to do is to do this planning in your own handwriting. I, I appreciate that some students uh, may prefer to type it out depending on your, your style and your familiarity or comfort with using a computer to do this and that's fine. I just find that it is better somehow. It sticks better with you if you do this planning in your own handwriting. So what you do is you divide an A4 folio page uh, vertically in half so that you can create two columns. In the left hand column, we will do the lower order thinking skills. 
the knowledge and the understanding that comes from your textbook or your other sources of law that has been prescribed to you. So this is where you write down the test or the requirements that are applicable. You state the provisions in the statutory uh, framework that is applicable. Carefully, fully and accurately. And then on the right hand side of the, uh, the page, you do the higher order thinking skills. Now, this is not simply repeating the lower order thinking skills again. This is where critical thinking happens, where your application predominantly, but also your analysis, perhaps even synthesis and evaluation will happen. I presented a summer school a few years ago where a student asked me, but how should we do this? How are we expected to know what to do? Well, this is why you're attending university to develop those skills. This is why we want to show you how we would approach it in our class discussions. This is the skill you must learn so that in a few years from now, you can ask clients a fair yet rigorous professional fee for applying basic knowledge, perhaps advanced understanding, to their problem. I'm often reminded of that scene in Goodwill Hunting, where the character portrayed by Matt Damon is in a bar. He sees how another gentleman is chatting to this woman. But all he does, this other gentleman, is recite in a parrot fashion economic history and theory. So, in an effort to impress, impress this woman. So, Matt Damon's character walks up to him and because he is literally parroting the words line by line from this book, as the other gentleman is speaking, he also says this. And this is the kicker. He says, what do you think actually on your own? Because any person in this country that can read and who can um, have access to the internet or a library can in all likelihood obtain the information that they would need to tentatively uh, solve their problems or at least point them in the correct direction. But it's for you as the legal professional to carefully curate an answer with all the possible manifestations and issues that could interplay into the scenario in the hot spot of your answer to them. It is this that justifies you asking them money. If you can't do this, you won't ever be able to answer, uh, to ask your clients for money to provide them with answers that technically doesn't say anything more than what they can find, perhaps even freely, in a book or on the internet. So yes, some of you may argue this is a very mechanical way of doing it. And sure, there is some merit in that criticism. But also we hope that with time, as you become more com comfortable with this planning, remember only planning, this is not a final answer, you will see how it is important to dot the I's and cross the T's. Make sure that you have an application part for each and every theory part you have. Have a hot spot for every lot spot that you have in any written academic or professional communication. And we will do this, Dr. Joshua and I, on a Thursday morning during an official lecture period when we do the class discussions. During those class discussions, we will adopt a specific apprenticeship approach or perspective to teaching and learning, where we, notionally as experts in the field, will walk you through how we would approach 
this problem. How we would plan it, how we would make sure that there is balance to our answer. A hot for every lots. Now, obviously, throughout the semester, we will adopt different kinds of teaching perspectives in our teaching and learning. Some of it will be transmission teaching. Some of it will be developmental approaches. Some of it will nurture you. And in other areas, we may even do some social reform work. But for the class discussions, we will show you how we would approach it in a very similar manner as how a master technician or a tradesman would show an apprentice how to lay pipes, do plumbing, electrical work, or lay bricks, so that one day you are as comfortable and as proficient as a professional to do this, and therefore entitled to charge a professional fee for your advice and guidance.